Hi everybody, welcome to Elementary Classical Mechanics, the subject where observing the universe suggests new mathematical and computational approaches that can literally transform our way of modeling and predicting any aspect of the world. Welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to begin Chapter 10, The Simple Pendulum and Torque and Angular Momentum. So in this lecture, I want to describe the physical system of the simple pendulum. And you see a picture of this right here. So we have a mass, a point mass, constant mass m, and it's connected to some point by an inextensible connector. Think of it as a very thin, massless wire. Inextensible, it doesn't shrink, it doesn't stretch. Okay, and it moves in a plane. It oscillates back and forth in the plane of the page, piece of paper, and the only force acting on it is gravity. So, we can describe the motion of this mass by a single variable, theta, where theta is the deviation from the straight down position. So, theta equals zero means the mass is at point A, and theta equal pi means it's standing straight up. Okay, now since the only force acting on it is gravity, we have, it's a conservative force, we have a potential energy function. So the potential energy would be the height above some reference position. And the reference position is going to be the mass hanging straight down, length L. So as we displace it to the side, what is the height above the reference position? That's going to be this distance here. And you can do a little trigonometry, and you can see that's L minus L cosine theta. Okay, keep that in mind. So with that description of the simple pendulum, we're going to derive equations of motion. We're going to do this in two ways. The first way is the energy method. So here's what we mean by that. So there's kinetic plus potential. And added together, these are a constant. So the kinetic is 1 half mv squared. And potential is mg times the height above the reference position. And I just described that. OK, now let's get to the uh, velocity, which we need for the kinetic energy. The position vector. Now we're going to use the r1, theta1 unit vectors that we've derived earlier, and we learned how to differentiate them with respect to time. So the position vector is L, the length, multiplied by the unit vector r1. So r dot, L doesn't change. It's an extensible. It's just L r1 dot. And we know what r1 dot is. It's theta dot, unit vector theta1. So now the total energy we know is 1 half m r dot dot r dot. That's from this expression. So it's 1 half m l squared theta dot squared plus mgl 1 minus cosine theta equals constant. We call it e. Now we differentiate this expression with respect to time. And we get this. We can pull theta dot out. We've seen calculations like this earlier. And we get this wonderful equation. Theta double dot equals minus g over l sine theta. This is the equation of motion for a pendulum, as I've just described, a one-dimensional pendulum. OK, that's good for now. We're going to come back next time and derive the same equations of motion using a different approach. And then we're going to analyze the phase plane for the simple pendulum. So, bye for now.